Hi everyone! I am back for winter break and today I am here to answer the question what the heck is up with the tardigrade genome? Now for those of you that don't know, tardigrades are these awesome little microscopic animals also called water bears and in addition to being adorable can survive pretty much anything. Sudden changes in salinity, really high and really low pressures, temperatures of almost absolute zero, really high radiation, and they're basically the only animal we know of that can survive in the vacuum of space. So they're kind of awesome. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail about what they are, but if you want you can watch a video from SciShow and I'm going to link to right here that explains all about them and why they are so 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 cool. Now the way they're able to survive in these crazy crazy conditions is that they can dry themselves out in a process called desiccation where they only have 3% of the water they normally do and they turn into this little tiny ball called a ton. And once they're in this ton, or tune, I'm not exactly sure, uh, they can rehydrate themselves later and continue living as if nothing happened. Last month in November of 2015 a research group that was headed by uh, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill decided they were going to sequence the genome of this awesome, awesome animal, the tardigrade. What they found is that over 6,000 of the tardigrade's genes, which is over a sixth of its total genes, did not actually belong to the tardigrade. These genes are from a process called horizontal gene transfer, in which genes from one type of organism in one kingdom, like plants or fungus or bacteria or archaea or whatever, somehow get inserted into the genome of another. Now what's really interesting about the tardigrade is that this is more horizontally transferred genes than we've ever seen before in an animal. For example, humans only have 140 horizontally transferred genes compared to the over 6,000 that was recently found in the tardigrade. You might be wondering how tardigrades get these foreign genes in the first place. When they dry themselves out to survive crazy crazy conditions, their DNA breaks up into little tiny pieces. The UNC researchers theorized that when they put the DNA back together when rehydrating, they can incorporate genes from other organisms in the surrounding area. These genes then become part of the tardigrade's genome and will undergo selection just like any other regular gene would. Something that the UNC team noticed is that a lot of the genes that were from horizontal gene transfer have to do with surviving in really extreme conditions. This may mean that the ability to incorporate new genes into its genome is what allowed the tardigrade to survive in crazy conditions in the first place. However, in early December, a shocking development came from the University of Edinburgh. Did I say that right? Maybe. Who knows? A team from the University of Edinburgh found that there was, quote, no evidence of massive horizontal gene transfer. What? <laughs> Basically, this team also sequenced the genome and found that it was a lot shorter than when the UNC team did it. The Edinburgh team said that UNC's data may have been compromised by bacterial contaminants and that a lot of the genes they thought were from horizontal gene transfer don't belong to tardigrades at all. They also brought up the point that genes from horizontal gene transfer may not have any actual effect in animals and will evolve neutrally, so should they even count? Something I think is cool is that both of these papers were published on sites that didn't have a paywall. So anybody could access it, you didn't have to pay for it or be a member of a university. The fact that these papers were out in the open for all to view not only increased the accessibility of knowledge for basically anyone, but also expedited the scientific process in this case. All of this happened in less than two months and in the public eye. Something cool too is that one of the UNC researchers actually commented on the page where the Edinburgh paper was saying that they were going to do more research and they were going to contact the team and try and work together and figure this out in general. In conclusion, tardigrades are awesome. They might have horizontally transferred genes, they might not. And we are entering a new age of scientific discovery where paywalls are jank. <laughs>screen. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I actually did this video as a paper for a class first and thought the subject would work really really well here so why not? Once again I will I want to link you to Off the Wire which is the comedy show that I work on and I'm actually the executive producer of right now. Uh, we have our season finale posted and it's really really good so you should definitely check it out. Don't forget to subscribe if you liked this video, or like it if you liked it, the thumb, thumb button down there. 
follow me on Twitter. I tweet about science occasionally, and it's kind of fun. And I will see you next time. Goodbye. I love you. Actually belong to the tardigrade. Thanks, phone. Oh, I got a I got a follower from Darren Kovanaki. Co 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 you got a shout out. You got a shout out, Darren Kovanaki.